decide to fit a patient in a corneal or intralimbal lens design, the ideal pattern that we're looking for is either slight apical pooling or three-point touch. So three-point touch would be this photo right here where the lens basically touches in three different locations, one spot in the middle, two in the mid-periphery, and so the weight of that lens is just spread out on the eye. And when you have a lens like this, it creates four very distinct zones that you should try to describe in your actual fit, um, in your actual chart. So the first zone is the center portion. So here we have light apical touch. The next zone is your paracentral pooling. So we have a nice ring of paracentral pooling. Then you have a mid-peripheral bearing zone where the lens rests. And then lastly, you have your peripheral clearance. So we need a nice little ring of peripheral clearance to make sure that tear exchange is happening so that it's healthy. So if I were to describe the fit on the left, that little video, I would say, you know, there's mild to moderate apical pooling, there's paracentral pooling, but I don't see any bubbles there, which is good. Um, we have our ring of mid-peripheral bearing as well. And then in terms of peripheral clearance, I would say it's a little excessive at six and a little minimal at three and nine but at least I don't see my tear meniscus breaking at six, which I'll show you an example of in a little bit. And so one thing we want to avoid definitely is any type of harsh touch on the cornea, like this video on the right. So here you can see that dark area where that lens just likes to sit on that cone. If we were to leave this patient alone like this, sure enough, they'd probably come back with SPK. And from the collect studies, we know SPK will lead to scarring. And down below, you see how that tear meniscus just breaks when she blinks at 6 o'clock. So there's a lot of excessive edge lift that's uh, over there as well. And so probably not the most comfortable lens for this patient. Now, a lot of my students will come and say to me, hey, Dr. Lee, I see touch. And then I'm like, is it harsh or is it light? And they won't really know how to tell the difference. And so what my mentor, Dr. Edrington at SCCO, taught me was, you know, to really differentiate between harsh touch and light touch is look at the border between the center portion of the lens and that paracentral pooling. If that border is very distinct and easy for you to see, then it's most likely a harsh touch as opposed to the picture on the right where the border is very fuzzy and hard to define because you know the tears are kind of just, you know, ebbing back and forth underneath that area of touch. And so um, this right here kind of for me is how I differentiate between the two. Harsh touch will definitely lead to SPK, whereas light touch we're hoping will not, but we have to monitor and make sure that it's healthy. Now, a quick note about intralimbal GPs in general. These tend to be just a little bit bigger than your traditional corneal GP, right? 10 to 12 millimeters in diameter. Um, because they're larger, they don't move as much on the eye, and the edges of the lenses tend to be tucked underneath the eyelid. And so patients feel that these are more comfortable. And so what you kind of notice sometimes, too, is an improvement in stability, better centration of the lenses. Um, and so when I think about when I may switch from a corneal GP to an intralimbal GP, it's when my patients in GPs are having all of these similar issues, right? Comfort issues, centration issues. And a line pattern can be really difficult to get. This is a patient that I kept playing around with during residency, trying to improve its fit. He has areas of touch in some places. He has a lot of pooling in others because his eye was just so irregular. And I love this fit because it just looks like Pac-Man. It's just what it reminds me of. Um, and so what I have to learn, too, is that, you know, these patients don't have regular corneas. So don't expect beautiful fluorescein patterns every time. Really what you're trying to do is maximize your patient's vision and not hurt the eye. And so as long as you're not seeing SBK and staining and all of these other, you know, issues with a poorly fitting lens, then I say just continue with it. If your patient does start to show ocular health issues, then we really have to think about the next step in revision rehabilitation. And so if you're going to fit your patient in a corneal or intralimbal design, first and foremost, you know, follow the fit guide. Some guides tell you start with deep K. Some guides say start with average K. Really, just get a lens onto the eye and then start making changes based off of the fluorescein pattern you see. And really, you want to use your Raffin filter. So look at the difference in the fluorescein pattern between the photo on the left and the photos on the right. The Raffin filter just really highlights that fluorescein pattern and makes it easier for you guys to see if there's pooling or touch and things like that. And then once you find the lens, 
that gives you you know really light touch or really slight pulling, then go ahead and do an over refraction. Don't over refract a lens that's you know harshly touching the eye or has a lot of pulling because that over refraction is not going to be accurate. Okay. And then lastly, you're going to want to document the rest of the lens fit and then call your um, consultant and just kind of talk with them, give them your over refraction, make all the changes you need to make to your peripheral curves or special coatings you may want to add on, or if you want to denote a specific material for your patient. And that's generally how I go about fitting my corneal and intralimbal lenses. Um, one other diameter or one other parameter that I really like to modify as well is the optic zone. So a lot of your cone patients, they're going to have a lot of paracentral pulling because if you can imagine a lens sitting on top of a cone, it's going to teeter-totter and then all around the base of the cone, you're going to have a lot of liquid and fluid just filling up there. And if you have too much paracentral pulling, you can actually start to get bubbles there as well and it's not comfortable for your patient, right? And so this is a patient that I saw where all I did was I took the OZD and made it a little bit smaller. And essentially, Dr. Bennett taught us this actually at our GPLI residence day. You're making the optic zone smaller to tuck that um, optic zone around that cone, making it just a little bit more of a snug fit. And so by doing that, you get rid of a lot of the paracentral pulling, and hopefully you get rid of the bubbles that may come with it as well. So hopefully you guys can see the difference there. 